Cynthia, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are actually not really creating a card. We are going to create a card box. So this could be like a little gift box uh, for including a set of cards. I gifted this one with a set of five cards in here and this will make everything that you need this one set here. So this is from Elena Crafts and everything does come all together however I didn't even need wire snips to be able to get it out. I just kind of bent things and it all came apart pretty easily. So you can see that these are even the side pieces here. There is literally nothing that you need to kind of separately cut uh, with this set. Obviously you need to die cut but I mean separately cutting out and measuring anything. It's all, all of the work is done for you. I am going to be making this box out of some craft colored cardstock. So you need to cut out two of that main big die. Now they all have all of their score lines in there ready to go for you so it makes it nice and easy. Now since I had my die cutting machine out, I kind of went ahead and did all of the die cutting first. So these are for the sides of the box, too long and too short. This is a paper pad here that I'm going to use today. Now this is the Fantasy Floral Collection from Recollections and I had a friend, Sasha Reed, she picked this up for me and sent it all the way over to me which is super kind and there are a couple of designs in here which are just melt my heart. They just speak to me so I am being so brave and she would be so proud of me that I'm actually going to use some of it today. Um, I'm going to use this nice big sheet of paper here mainly for this dark navy blue. Now I know that this doesn't really show up on camera, it looks a really interesting color on the camera. But anyway, here is the inside die that comes with the set obviously. And I'm going to cut two of these which will become the front and the back of the box. Then I've also cut out the four sides of the box as well. Now here's where I wanted to do something just slightly different. I am using a rectangle from my Hero Arts uh, Infinity Rectangle Set and I'm going to cut out the center of one of those panels because I want my card box to have a big window in the front. Now obviously this is optional, you certainly don't have to do this, but it's just another look that you can achieve relatively uh, simply with the same tools and the same die set. Now because I have created a window, you are going to be able to see inside the box. So I need to have something to pop in there as well so that you can't just see the craft cardstock. And I just went through that paper pad and picked out this kind of light pink pattern here, which I die cut a rectangle from as well. Now I recommend using some double sided tape for this project, however liquid glue would work perfectly fine as well. You just need to add the double sided tape to one of the box templates because obviously you'll be adhering them onto each other. Now I decided again <laughs> to go down a slightly different route. So I cut off one of the upper tabs um, of the boxes and then this triangle die here comes in the set. It also comes with a kind of uh, lacy add-on that you can add and layer up underneath it. I chose not to use that one today but it does come in the set. Then I'm just going to fold all of my scored edges so that they're ready to go. Then this is where I just need to quickly run this through before I start putting things together. So this is where the window will be created on the front of my card box. So again, I just chose a rectangle from that uh, Hero Arts Infinity die set and I will run that through my die cutting machine, leaving a nice big window. The next thing that I need to do for my window is add a piece of acetate. Again, you could maybe leave the window open or you could add some vellum which wouldn't make it quite as see-through. All options to explore. But I'm going to add some double-sided tape down, then take that off and I have cut a piece of acetate that is just slightly bigger than my rectangle uh, that I made for the window pop it down and then I'm going to add another layer of double sided tape on top of it so I can adhere down the frame that we cut earlier on. Now I just thought this kind of navy blue and the craft cardstock went together really well but the possibilities are literally endless that you could create with this box and the colors that you could choose and put together it would look just as good made out of white cardstock with some other pattern papers going on top. There are so many options. Uh, so I'm looking forward to making these 
for some of my slightly bulkier cards that I am able to send through the mail and I know that they will get there as I intended them to. Uh, it certainly will cost more in the mail but I figure if I'm putting that much time into the cards then I really like to make sure they get there in one piece. But this also would make a perfect box for um, giving a gift in person as well. Now before I go ahead and close up the whole box, this is where I want to put the pink piece of pattern paper in the centre. It doesn't matter if it's all exactly perfectly lined up because you won't be able to see the edges or anything. Now this is where I'm just going to put together the rest of it, so I just make sure that the flaps are lining up. I take off the release paper for my double sided tape and it's also on those wee edge flaps there as well. I have a little bit of double sided tape. And then everything lines up super perfect. That's the one good thing about die cutting is that your measurements cannot be off at all. <laughs> and that definitely helps me out. Now the one thing that I did really like about this set, um, because this is not something that I often do, kind of making individualized boxes, because in all honesty it's usually the time factor. However with this set and that all the dies come and everything is kind of pre-cut and just ready to go, it does make it go really fast so I'm just able to glue on that back there. I had already pre-put on some double sided tape onto these side pieces but definitely liquid glue would work just as well um, and be just as effective here but it is so simple just to pop on all these pieces and move on to the next thing. So I will really enjoyed putting this box together and I really liked the end outcome as well. Now as for how to close the box at the top, there is this triangle that comes with it that I'm going to pop onto that top flat. Remember I cut one of the top flaps off the um, original die cuts but I left one on and that's what I'm attaching this to. And there is also as I said some other uh, layering pieces that you can layer onto the front of this flap. It does come with these triangle die cuts that you can pop on to layer up just like the front, the back and the sides of your box so that is super easy. I have one that I'm adding with liquid glue and the second one I already had some double sided tape on it. I just went through and kind of did this all in stages so I just taped up everything um, that I thought I would need at the time. So either either whatever is your preferred method would work really well here. And the other one good thing about this box is that there's also not too many pieces that it's confusing as to where everything should go. It's pretty obvious, you really can't go wrong, and uh, but it's also kind of up for personalization and you can make it the way you want it to be. So here I was looking at the front flap and I didn't really love the way that it kind of came all the way over. So I drastically decided to just cut it off, <laughs> which actually ends up looking fine in the end. If I'd had my way, I probably would have had that little, um, the strip that's left of the triangle up there, the layered strip. I probably would have had the end cut off that so it left an even border all the way around, but that's okay. I'm coming back to this paper pack and this here is honestly the sheet that I just stare at. It's so beautiful. I have die cut out out of that pink pattern cardstock, the same one that's in the middle there. I die cut out some of those leaves and things. Then out of the same navy that's on the sides in the front and back, I die cut out those other big foliage. Then I fussy cut out some of the flowers from that paper pack as well. I've just got this little random piece of white cardstock here that I'm going to use as a base to adhere down my little decoration for the front of my box. I'm just adding some double sided tape so that I know it's nice and strong and it's not going to go anywhere. Then I've just got a little arrangement, a little kind of floral arrangement which will sit on the front of my box. And adding that little piece to begin with just gives me a really nice solid base and makes this so much easier for putting everything together. I'm adhering all of those first bits down completely flat, uh, all of the leaves and things. Then when I adhere this down onto my box, I know I've got a little bit more room for using some foam tape and some different heights. So I'm just going to kind of sit this in the corner and just roughly, I wasn't measuring anything, I hadn't actually figured out what I was doing, but I roughly knew where I was going. I'm going to add the biggest flower at the back, and as I said, this one's going to be flat. I have two that look really similar here, so I'm going to put one of those each side, and again, they just have the double-sided tape on the back. But that little one that's going to sit at the front, I am going to pop that up just for a little bit of dimension. But if you are mailing this and things, maybe you want to keep it flatter, it's up to you. 
I just kind of ended up fiddling around with a few other pieces of the foliage and there's these couple of little buds that I added onto the side there. And then there was one little piece of foliage that I trimmed a little bit off and I'm going to add that back in the side just to even up my little bouquet as well. Then for the closure of this little uh, gift box or envelope gift box, I had had in mind all along that I would use some of these little mini um, hook and loop, uh, so like Velcro dots. Um, however, I can't find them anywhere. <laughs> you can get some really cute little mini ones. So I kind of just uh, had a look in my drawer and I found these magnets, which I used to use all the time. Now I have no idea if these are still available, but there'll be something similar available. These are from Basic Grey. They are just little magnetic discs and they are super, super, super thin. You can see there on the back, they have a little sticker and you need a positive and a negative, obviously, for them to work. And they also have adhesive backing on them. So you can see here just how thin they are. And so they create really no bulk at all, which was the idea here, I guess. So all I have to do to pop these on is peel back one of those adhesive sides. And I just let the two magnets stick together. I put one of them where I know I want it to go up the top. Then remove the second bit of adhesive that is still facing me from the second magnet. And then I can just push it down onto um, where it's going to land. And that means that they are nice and even and in exactly the right place. And that's a really nice, easy closure for our box. There are absolutely endless opportunities to decorate this box. So I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. And I'm going to continue making a few more. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.